phones or anything like that. My analysis is literally one way and it just makes things a whole lot easier for me. No, that might make makes sense. Makes yeah. perfect sense. The, 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 the downside to that, which is, um, I guess, what everybody uh, um, is here for is, is trades. So whereas I'm comfortable sitting on my hands um, and uh, one of my favorite sayings in, just in life in general is never confuse activity with accomplishment. So I don't care how busy somebody is. Yeah, if you take 20 trades and I take three, yeah, and I can achieve the same uh, result or better. It's, it's better for me. I don't want to, you know, as much as I love trading and, you know, I like trying to figure things out and all that kind of stuff. I do like spending time with family, friends and things like that. So I get the learning curve. There is a learning curve and we spend a lot of time at our screens to kind of learn. But there's going to come a point where you'll, you'll, you'll start to realize that, in fact, you know, the, the, the level of of trading or the number of trades doesn't actually correlate to uh, the uh, the amount of profit that you're going to make. It really doesn't. You can take one great trade for the year, make a, a 50 to one, you see what I'm saying, on literally one or two or three trade ideas. Think about, even just think about recently, oil. Oil, right, the writing was on the wall with oil. Yeah, it was coming. And... For anybody who uh, commodities, you know, who was who was really following, who was really following oil. Sorry, let me go to this this chart here. If you think about what was happening at the beginning of the year from a risk off perspective, yeah, we had first of all we had I think it is, we started off the year um, with the Iran general being killed. Does everyone did anyone remember that by uh, by the US? Do you remember the beginning of the year? Yes. Right, yeah, yeah right. So that risk off scenario, and, and, and strangely enough, that didn't really have the impact that we thought it would have. But Iran being a, uh, a, a major oil producer, um, you would have thought that, you know, with war potentially coming on the horizon, that that would definitely affect oil. Yeah. Um, didn't necessarily have the, the major impact, but... You know, it wasn't in the consciousness, but then we still had a, a kind of like a drop in, in the prices of oil. So at the time, fundamentally, you know, we were somewhere around here, yeah, beginning of the year. And then as the year started to go on, smart money, who were probably taking bets on um, uh, the coronavirus, global slowdown, etc., as we started accelerating into you know, really kind of end of January, February, and we started really getting the spread of the virus in a risk off scenario, which we know typically in a risk off scenario should, I say should, you know, we know that oil typically goes down in a risk off scenario. Um, but over, and as well, it depends on the risk off scenario. So things like global growth, and why is global growth important? to oil because of supply and demand. If you have no demand, if, if demand for, you know, transportation, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, work, for example, recessions, people aren't going to work and things like that. And whatever oil is used for uh, manufacturing, etc., products, you know, demand is obviously going to dwindle. But if, if OPEC are not agreeing to cut the amount of output, that they produce, the amount of barrels that they produce, then you start to get what? More supply and less demand. Now we've had this shock. Yeah, we've had this massive shock when it comes to uh, the coronavirus and obviously countries shutting down, social distancing, etc. So it was really a no brainer when you think about it from a logical perspective to just stay short, stay short. That was it. And one of these trades, if you had this one trade idea from even from around the, 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 the beginning of, or the end of February, beginning of March, when it was really taking grips. And even so, even, there was even another one. I, I did, did anyone watch the video where I showed the, um, the, uh, the, the, the stop hunt, by the way, the stop hunt around here? Did anyone see that video? Yes, that's all. Yeah, you saw it. Yeah. yeah. So, so. Even if you missed out on this, 
let's say, for example, even if you missed out on that and you're like, okay, by now you should have pretty much known, you know, by March, April, beginning of April, you should have really been short in oil. Yeah, if, if you trade that market. Yeah, it should never have been, I'm trying to buy oil. Sometimes we do try to pick the lows, but uh, and this is where technical analysis kind of falls, tends to fall flat because technical analysis, for some reason you have, well, say so technical analysis without understanding value um, is, is many traders would just try to pick bottoms, if you know what I mean, because it's just a thing to do, if you know what I mean. It's, it's a, like a psychological thing. But let me just go over this trade really quickly before I get sidetracked. Um, there, was a, there, was a, there was a great opportunity to get short on the... Uh, on oil. Yeah, understanding the fundamentals. Got a nice level, level, level. So at this point in time, why would you not look at that as a really nice setup and just get short? Mm -hmm. Now, the point I'm trying to, before I forget the point, is that sometimes we don't necessarily be, the, the, the number of trades doesn't correlate to the amount that you will make in your, your, your equity curve. What does matter though is quality trades, is really quality trades and a really good trade idea. So if somebody trades, just had this really great trade idea and also held, imagine what they would have made in their risk reward from the perspective of, you know, understanding there. So there was your, your stop hunt above the market However, you got in and then to the downside, brilliant. That could have represented however, you know, whatever it is that, you know, it represents. So, um, you know, that long-winded thing was basically just to say uh, quality over quantity. And I get there's, there's, there's some of you who are in this who are, um, you know, uh, trading prop firm you know, trading in prop firms and money and things like that. And there is a thing to kind of prove every day that, you know, you're, you're taking trades and things like that. It's, it's, but if you can, if you can quality over quantity, that's just, that's just the, the, the message that I want to, I want to get over to, to everybody. Trade ideas, quality doesn't come around every day or even sometimes even every week, but when it does, you have a nice, a really nice, um, uh, um, uh, uh, trade and also as well so if what i'm saying resonates with you why not check out trading180.com there is a selection process to trade my supply and demand zone forex strategy i'm only looking to work with uh, individuals with the right mindset you know who are hard working as well so um check that out and access really for less than one pound a day. This Some of the strategies in here are not for beginners. So if you don't know what supply and demand is, please check out all of my supply and demand videos. I have hundreds of videos on YouTube, so you can check that out first. Um, guys, take care and until the next video, have a good one.